Hi everyone, it's Dr. Ndavia from Princeton, New Jersey, and today I wanted to talk to you about the potential complications of Botox, Dysport, and other botulinum products. So first, most patients are concerned with the fact that these are toxins. And that is a fact, these are toxins, and it's a, it's a toxin produced by the bacteria Clostridium botulinum. And it works by temporarily paralyzing muscle activity by stopping nerve signals to that particular muscle. And it sounds scary, but here's a couple of things to keep in mind. Number one, it only acts where it's injected and doesn't go to the rest of the body in a clinically significant way. Number two, the amounts that are used to get rid of wrinkles on the forehead, glabella, and the crow's feet aren't nearly enough toxin to result in any life-threatening effects. In order to produce a lethal effect for a 100-pound person, 5,000 equivalent units of botulinum toxin would be need, to, need to be used. And that's over $50,000 worth of Botox. One syringe worth of botulinum toxin typically has under 50 units. So it's impossible to cause a life-threatening event with the amounts that we typically use. But still, there are complications that can occur if care is not taken. So the first and most common side effect or complication that patients get is a short-term headache. And that's pretty common and it lasts for a few days. Um, bruising can also happen, especially if patients are on aspirin, ibuprofen, or other blood thinners. And typically that bruise will go from being purple to pink to green to yellow, and then it will finally disappear within 7 to 10 days. Uh, Arnica, Arnica cream can help sometimes to speed up that recovery, and green tinted makeup can also be used to help cover that up. Now rarely, a particular botulinum product might not work, indicating that there might be an allergy to that brand. And in those instances, we typically switch brands and that can be helpful. I have yet to meet a patient that has an antibody to all the different types of the botulinum products, but I suppose it could still happen. Uh, another rare complication is that there can be asymmetry in the final results, where one site might have a little less movement or the brow might be higher on a particular side. And usually, a small touch-up at two weeks is enough to even out those asymmetries. One of the more dreaded complications is ptosis, or a droopy eyelid where botulinum toxin was injected too close to the upper eyelid muscles. And in those cases, the eyelid can be droopy for up to three to four months. But for most patients, it lasts about six weeks or so. And with a safe medicated eye drop, that, that helps to lift the eyelid, the droopiness is really less noticeable. Now, dropping a brow can also occur if the toxin is injected too close to the eyebrow. And there's no good medical remedy aside from waiting three months or so for this but most physicians will not inject within a two centimeter region around the eyebrow as you get closer to the temples. So that helps prevent that complication. So I hope this helps you understand some of the potential complications of using Botox and Dysport. They're all pretty rare and for the most part treatable, but it's important that they're temporary and that you understand that. It is also important to find someone that's had proper training in the surgical and non-surgical treatment of the face and neck and has had plenty of experience and demonstrates a pretty deep understanding of the anatomy of the face and all of its important underlying structures. That's probably the most important in preventing these complications. But if you have any other questions or would like to schedule a consultation, email us at info at or visit our website at drndavia.com.